Hello everyone. I just wanted to make this quick video because somebody on the Xano community forums asked me to. Um, they were just asking for some general do's and don'ts um, and tips when using Xano with Flutterflow. So let's get into the first one right away. This is going to be for API calls. When using API groups, do not use the group header here you're going to want to do a header for every single one of the API calls. And that's because for some reason, the group headers just don't work. Using the groups can keep it kind of tidy and it's good because in Xano, your different API groups are going to have different API group URLs. If you end up like migrating your server or upgrading, this is going to change and you're going to need to change it for every single one of your calls or just for your groups. So I, I would definitely do it for groups and make sure you do the individual headers for each of them. The next one is also going to be for API calls. And this one is going to be basically for the JSON paths. So, you know, when you make your API call here, you're going to have like recommended JSON paths. And then if you select them, you'll go in here and then you'll name them. I found this to actually be a waste of time because there is an issue when you do a list view, basically you go in and you want to assign it the item and you go for the JSON path and then you realize, oh shoot, you can't select a JSON path here. So I wouldn't bother naming them and I, I would just do it like so. Um, because it's just going to be way easier on you. Um, and you're going to be able to like see your JSON paths. Um, so it's way cleaner to do it that way. And it saves you a step with having to name every single one that you're trying to use. And then if, uh, the path ends up changing and you still have it bound to that specific name, uh, you're going to have to go and change that too. Uh, so I would just recommend not worrying about that. The next one is going to be for your if conditionals. So normally let's say we create an action and we want to do an API call and it's going to automatically create this succeeded. Um, I don't recommend using this one. I've uh, had trouble with it even registering. So one thing I do is go is basically going into it then you go in and you create the boolean and then you find your action output in the api call and then you go in and you put in status code and then you make the status code equal to and you put 200 right here and that's an okay status code that will allow it to work a lot better the next tip is kind of a hard one because I can't really seem to figure out why it works and why it doesn't sometimes, but basically after an API call, you're going to want to add a wait delay in some situations. Sometimes it'll kind of like get hung up on the next action in the action flow because the API call doesn't finish before getting to here. Basically, sometimes you're going to need to do this when you're updating like, a uh, page state variable or an app state variable, and it'll basically not update because it reaches the update page state or app state before the API call has returned anything. So yeah, some places you're going to want to add this and some places you won't need it. Uh, I still don't understand why, but if you're basically debugging why a page state or an app state isn't updating and you're, it's remaining empty or null, uh, you might want to just add a wait and see if that fi fixes it for you. All right. The next one is such an amazing feature. I'm so happy they have this in Flutterflow. It's incredible. Basically, instead of doing our format timestamps and creating all this stuff in the back end in Xano to make a date, how we want it, they have it directly built in to Flutterflow. So this is a page that it's similar to like Reddit and we want to display like how long ago 
the person posted and we just add in our JSON path, our created at, and make sure you put milliseconds here. That's very important because everything is in millise milliseconds in Xana. And it's really simple to find. So we're going to find date time and we are going to click on that. And then we're going to set it from like our item and go into the JSON path and put, we're going to choose milliseconds. And then for this one, I want the time ago. So, which is like the relative one and that's how you do it. All right. The next one is a very general tip about custom functions. So one thing that I learned recently is that custom functions, uh, one that they're done on the device, right? So it's going to slow down the device. If you have too many of them, um, it's going to be noticeable on older devices. So minimize what you do here. And also they are not secure. So do not use custom functions to process any sensitive data and just do that stuff in your backend. But simple stuff like, like this double to integer function are completely fine, uh, to do here. All right. So the next one kind of relates to one of my other videos and basically, uh, we are getting our, uh, likes, um, and we're updating them in our app states right here. Okay. Uh, so essentially we are doing a custom function that parses the JSON. And I, I was having tons of issues with this. Sometimes data can be parsed and sometimes you're going to have to use a function for it. I'm still unsure why that is, but. I had to use a custom function for this one. And so this is going to be on page load. We're doing all this and the reason we're doing this, and this is on my home page. So when the user clicks to go to that other page, that data is already going to be there. So it'll, it'll populate instantly. And I can show you guys real quick what I mean by that. So we have our home screen right here. And it's already like done that function on page load and we go here and it loads and boom, the, the likes that list that we're getting are already there. And that's really important because otherwise they won't show up and we're doing it on the home page before they go to that other page, because I mean, there, there is a way to do it. You can basically do a conditional to where you would essentially hide the, the list until the other one finishes and populates the page state or app state. So I would basically do an if conditional on this entire list until like that other one finishes. And then I would unhide, like mark it as true through updating the state variable. And then this would unhide and it would show the likes. But I, I chose to just do it on the home page. And so I don't have to worry about creating that workflow, even though I had it that way first and it was really annoying. The last tip that I have for you guys is essentially <laughs> something that I randomly stumbled upon. Basically <clears throat> I made a post about it on the forum right here. <laughs> so I got a compilation error due to a post API call variable name. And so what the variable name was, was body. And if you look at the error here, let me zoom in real quick. Basically it says that it can't declare body because it's already used in the scope. And I was like, but I don't have anything that's using it. And then I look and it is darts backend API calls. So yeah, don't try and use something called body <laughs> essentially. Yeah, I hope this video helped and I will definitely be making another one of these when I have more tips for y'all, but that should be really good for now and definitely save you some headaches. So yeah, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you've discovered with using Xano and Flutterflow that could help others. Thank you.